Welcome back to Seasons, a devotional based on my book by the same name. And the chapter in the book that we're going to be using as a launching pad is, have you checked your insurance policy? The owners of my apartment building make it mandatory that everybody who lives here must have adequate rental insurance. And that just makes sense. After all, I want to be a good steward over my possessions. And the last thing I would ever want is that an accident that I may have caused to cause other people to suffer financial hardship. However, I was dealing with a rather pushy insurance broker's office for a wee bit a few years back. One year my agent was strongly suggesting I get a more comprehensive package. She could sense my reluctance to do so and then offered to send me clear documentation that would explain the differences between what I currently had and what she was trying to sell me. That informational package really gave me a good giggle when I read it carefully. I realized I was covered against bear vandalism. I did kind of wonder how would a bear get up to my apartment? Would he or she take my elevator or would he or she take the stairs? I was also amused to know that my rugs wouldn't be insured against oil damage caused by repairing the motorcycles. I chuckled, well, there goes my oil change from home idea. I am not mocking good stewardship by any means. I think it is important that we make sure that we have adequate insurance to cover some of the what ifs of life, but you can go overboard. Insurance companies, after all, capitalize on the fear of the unknown. What if I die tomorrow? How will my children go to college? Will I have a roof over my head if a flood ravages my town? What if I'm in a horrible accident? What if I'm behind the wheel in that accident? What if my apartment is robbed? What if a confused and directionally challenged bear attack my high rise in the middle of a large urban city? What if a motorcycle gang decide to overtake my apartment just to do an oil change. If you are a worry-based person who's always thinking about what might happen tomorrow and you're doing everything you can to put everything in order so what might happen tomorrow won't happen, you can be consumed about it to the point that you're no longer able to enjoy life today as you try to prepare for every contingency in your future. But we need to remember this. Christians have assurance for today. And we also have insurance against the what ifs of tomorrow. We can safely place our hopes for tomorrow and our fears in his capable hands. As we submit our ways to the Lord and follow through on his guidance and direction, we can avert self-caused tragedies and even if we do face calamities and natural disasters at some point in our future we can be assured that his promises will see us through here are some bible verses i'd like you to meditate upon jeremiah 29 11 we all know this verse but did you know that this verse was a promise spoken to the Israelites when they were thrown into exile and that exile wasn't going to end for 70 years. So you can take this promise as the benefit that you will receive if you take out a long-term life insurance policy with the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 is one of my life verses. And I have seen God come through on his promise every single time. There's no hidden clauses and there's no hard to understand terminology when it comes to God's promises. 
I have gone through all these things mentioned here in my life, and God has brought me through. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Put your name in there. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the last Bible passage. I would encourage you if you're somebody who is really prone to worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow, to write this down, memorize it, and pull it out every time you find your heart and your mind racing about what if the worst happens tomorrow, or what if the worst happens today even. Matthew 6 verse 31 to verse 34. Therefore do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble, and if you've got any troubles today, lay them at his feet and allow him to guide you through whatever is facing you right now. Worrying about tomorrow will not help tomorrow be any better, and it won't help tomorrow not be anxious. So let tomorrow be anxious for itself, let it do its own thing, and just stay in the present moment with the Lord.